In this video I'll show you how to make a simple mobile game like Cow Evolution in Unity in less than half an hour. That is my first time making something similar to a tutorial, so I would appreciate if you would support me with a like or a constructive comment down below. That being said, let's start. I will focus mostly on programming, that is why I will use some sprites that I drew before. The very first thing I'm doing is resizing the screen for mobile. Next I change the background color to something that looks like snow and add the fan sprite, resizing it accordingly. Now I'll create a script called Game Manager which will handle most of the game's mechanics like spawning and purchasing penguins. Before we proceed with the script, let's make a folder for it. Here I am making a static object of that class to be able to access its contents from any other script. Because of that I wouldn't recommend to use this design for a bigger project. Then I'll need to store the penguin prefab in the game object to be able to instantiate it easily. All the penguins and poop sprites will be stored in a sprite array and the penguin names will be stored in a string array. And I need an integer to keep track of the coins we have. Let's add our script to the main camera and let's fill our arrays. The names will be changed later, so don't worry about that now. Next I'll start making the penguin and its behavior. Each penguin will have its tier as well as two types of poops they can make, a good one and a bad one. Higher penguin tiers make higher tier poops. Then I'll make a method named setPenguin which will be called whenever a penguin is spawned. Here the penguin will be assigned its sprite and poops based on its tier. Penguins of tier 0 will be able to take only bad poops. Let's test if it works by having a penguin of tier 0 and one of tier 3. Nice, it works. Back to our game manager and let's make a method for spawning the penguin. We will need a reference to our fans for that. First we'll find the position where we want to spawn the penguin and that will be a random x and y position inside the boundaries of our fans, plus some offset so it's not on the very edge. Now I'm gonna make a folder for the prefabs and we'll create a prefab from our penguin. Simply drag and drop our fans on penguin prefab, delete the existing penguin and let's see. Yep, penguins are spawning, cool. Let's bring this fella back and apply a circle collider to the component and make it trigger so it doesn't collide with other penguins. We'll also need a rigid body to the component without gravity. Reason why we need those components is because otherwise on mouse methods would not work. I'll create three methods for when we click, drag and release the penguin. And I'll make a boolean that will be set to true whenever the penguin is dragged and to false when it is released. And when we drag the penguin we'll change his position to the mouse position, thus allowing us to drag him on the screen. It works, but it moves the center of the penguin. It can be easily fixed. We will need a vector 3 offset and whenever we click the penguin the first time, we'll calculate the difference between the center of the penguin and the position where we clicked. Then we will simply move the penguin keeping that offset. Perfect. Next I will make the penguins detect collisions. If the collider has a penguin tag, we will check whether both have the same tier and if so we will evolve one penguin and destroy the other one. But in case the penguins are already colliding when I start dragging, on trigger enter won't be called, so that's the reason we need on trigger stay as well. Inside the evolve method we'll increase the penguins tier by 1 and we'll call the set penguin method. Add the penguin tag to our penguin prefab and test how it works. It does work, but it lacks some effects, so let's add some. I'll make a particle system, set the speed to 0 so it won't move, make it non-looping, resize it a little, change the rate to only one particle. Set the radius to 0.1 and add sprite sheet animation. In order for it to work, we have to create a sprite atlas in which we'll add all the sprites from our sprite sheet. When that is done, simply fill the sprite sheet. Ignore the error and hit play. It works, so let's make it faster and make it child of our penguin. Nice. Now we just need to play those particles whenever evolve method is called. Now just drag and drop. They got resized when we made them a child object, so let's just change them to default size back and remove play on awake. Voila! Looks much better now. Now let's proceed to making the poop object. 
Similar to penguins, each poop will have its tier and a set poop method that will assign the sprite based on tier and will call a coroutine that will destroy the poop object after a second has passed. Whenever a poop disappears, it should give coins based on its tier. So in our game manager class, we will make a method that will take an integer as parameter and will increment or decrement the number of coins that we have by that amount. Let's call this method before destroying the poop. Tier 1 poop gives 1 coin, tier 2 gives 10, tier 3 a hundred, and so on. Next, inside the penguin class, we'll make a take poop method inside which we'll instantiate a new poop object. And using invoke repeating, we'll call this method every 3 seconds. Set the poop script, create the poop prefab, and drag this prefab onto our penguin. And now our penguin knows how to take a dump. <laughs> Gorgeous. Okay. Time to make the move if they are not being dragged by the player. We will need one more vector for the destination and a boolean that will check whether the destination is selected or not. If the penguin is not dragged and doesn't have a destination, it will pick a position similar to how spawning works and then will set the boolean to true. If it has a destination, the penguin will move towards it until it reaches it. And then the boolean gets set back to false, so the penguin chooses another destination. Let's check it out. Well, it works, but the offsets are too small. Also, I don't want the penguins to evolve when they collide by moving. That's why I'll change the offset and add a boolean to check for that. Time for some UI. I'll create a panel on top of the screen and one at the bottom. On the top there will be a coin icon and the text for the amount of coins that we currently have. At the bottom there will be two buttons. One for purchasing penguins and one for purchasing upgrades. I made a text script inside of which we will handle all the manipulations with the text and we will do so again by making a static object of that class. Don't forget to import all the libraries needed. To change the coin text, an integer parameter will be passed. Now we call the method whenever an operation with coins takes place. And let's add some coins when the game starts. Again, drag and drop the script and drag and drop the text item. Now let's see if it works. Yep, every poop gives us some coin. Since coins work, we have to add options to spend them. I'll make a buy method which simply checks whether or not we have enough coins for a penguin and spawn it. With each penguin, the price will increase. Now call the method whenever the buy penguin button is pressed. And it works! I also quickly made so it shows the current price for the penguin. Time for upgrades. First I'll make an upgrade screen object together with a method for opening and closing it. And decide it to the upgrade button. As for the actual window, I need a title, an upgrade panel, an icon, name, description and a button to buy this upgrade. Also we need a button to close this window and it will use the same method as for opening it. Back to our script. Here I'll reference the purchase button and we'll make the method for this upgrade. After buying it, the button will stop being interactable. Inside our game manager we'll have a method similar to penguin spawning but with crates and another method that will start regularly spawning those crates which will be called whenever the upgrade is purchased. Set all the parameters and make our button call the method we just made. But we don't have crates yet, so we'll do that now. A crate will have a very simple script which will spawn penguin at the position of the crate whenever the crate is clicked. However, to do so we need a slightly modified method for spawning pigments, one that will take the crate's position as a parameter. Let's make a crate prefab and as you might remember, in order for one mouse method to work, we need the object to have a rigid body and a collider attached to it. Time to test our upgrades. Yay, everything works as intended, um, well almost. After evolving, the penguins aren't moving because I forgot to set the is dragged boolean to false whenever releasing a penguin. Now it should work properly. Yep. And I also forgot to change the text on upgrades button. We're almost done. Every penguin has a poop frequency that is based on its tier, which will decide how fast the good poop should be made. 
Every second we'll increase the variable poop in belly by few and when the penguin has enough poop in his belly for a good proper dump, he will take it. This way higher tier penguins will make good poops more often. Last thing I want to implement is a congratulations screen whenever a new penguin tier is unlocked. In order to do that in my game manager I'll keep track which tier is the highest. To do so I made a method which takes an integer tier as parameter and checks it with the current highest tier. If there is a new highest tier I'll call a coroutine called new tier. Here I'll activate the congratulations window and set the penguin's name and penguin's image. After 2 seconds the window will close. And every time a penguin will evolve, it will check whether or not a new tier was unlocked. Now let's quickly make the congratulations screen where the name and image will be, as well as drag all of them onto our script. Time to change the temporary names from the beginning to something slightly better. I've also added some extremely simple animations just to make the image more dynamic. And we're done! We can now play the game! That's about everything for this video. If you found it interesting or entertaining, please consider leaving a like and subscribing to the channel. That will help a lot. See you next Saturday.